So today we are going to talk about the trailer. Um, I've had a lot of people question about different things that we can do with the cha uh, trailer and how we've done them, why we did them this way, so on and so forth. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, stay tuned. So when you do a build like this, you have to take a lot of consideration to your planning stage as far as what you guys want out of it, um, what you guys plan to do with it, and what's your objective as far as your end goal for where you see your trailer at. For us, this here was we wanted to be able to sleep in it. So we checked that off the box. Um, me and my wife can sleep in the bottom. Next thing was we want to be able to put a rack on it. We got the rooftop tent up there. The reason for that is we have kids still with us and we like to go over landing with them and take them out now they don't always like going out but the kids um, as they grow up they're going to have their own life and have their own ways and so we respect that but we still want to have that on there just in case we decide to go over landing and say they get a little bit older they want to go with us we have the sleeping space um, we wanted to be able to cook in it so we got the galley um, that's why we built it in the back um, and then, of course, we added in a few other amenities um, that we feel that we wanted. Um, they're not really needs for a lot of people, but we wanted them for ours. Um, mainly, like, if, you're hit, if you hit some bad weather, we have the TV mount, which I have to redo a little bit because we bought the roto packs for the side uh, for water. Um, that kind of interferes with the mount now for the TV, which we'll, we'll, we'll make that work. Um, but we have a TV in there. We got a stereo. We got some other stuff. I'm a music and audio guy by trade. Um, I like I like electronics just because I'm an IT guy. Um, and this this was just us wanting to take it to the next level and take us out in the middle of nowhere, go have some fun. What I like about it is when I go out, I don't use that stuff. You know, we don't use the TV. We really don't use the stereo. Sometimes we do if we want some music and that kind of stuff when we're cooking or whatever. But for the majority of the time, it never gets used because once we're out on the trails we found that we enjoy the peace and quiet and the nature and everything around us more than stuff in our face with electronics and cell phones and all this other stuff so let's talk a little bit about our trailer build today we're going to talk a little bit about the galley um i've done that four different times um the first time i didn't like it i tried it um, i ripped it out in mid build um, it got closer to sema we put it all back together on a different way. Didn't like that either. So um, I, I then went to the Excrusion, um, which is the aluminum uh, T-bar channel stuff. Tried that, I hated it. Um, it just it didn't hold up the way I wanted it to with the bounciness and, and traveling down the road. And then I found this guy on Facebook that actually built some for his old Rubicon. And I talked to the guy and we basically bought them. I took some measurements and they fit perfect. And this here is where it takes it takes you take a step back and you talk about simplifying some of your build stuff to just make it functional for what you're looking for. Don't just go and try to do it because like a, the extrusion looked nice. I don't get me wrong. I love the way the extrusion looked, but it wasn't functional for what we wanted to. We were taking this thing off roading, and the and the extrusion and the aluminum kept coming breaking. Some of the screws kept breaking. They kept coming loose. Um, there was just all sorts of problems we were having with it. Now, they have nicer ones out there. We kind of went on a cheap budget build trying to do that, and it didn't work out very well. So let's take, let's, let's take a walk around. So I am not done with this, but these are the cabinets. It was this cabinet here, right there, and this cabinet right here that I purchased from the guy up in Chicago that had built these, and he built it pretty much robust enough for us to be able to use it for whatever. So we got it set up, so we got the, uh, the fridge that slides out. Got some nice slides here. And then we got drawer space, so we got, um, they, they come out pretty far. We keep our fire fire pit, uh, uh, ammo fire box that we built. Um, this thing's like been really handy. Keep our leveling jacks, and then we keep some MREs and stuff, some emergency food in this one. Um, I don't know what we're gonna actually use for that one fully, but this one here, we pretty much keep all of our miscellaneous stuff. We got some uh, repel, we got some lotion, we got the duty bags, we got some propane, water, garbage bags, um, toilet paper, pretty much some just miscellaneous. We got some utensils and stuff. Um, this thing here, you guys probably seen these. 
Um, but Rex was the one who actually, uh, in uh, Overland Mountain West, uh, he actually turned me on to this. It's actually an LED light, as well as a bug zapper. So if you guys are looking for a good little tool to um, use so that you can get to keep the bugs away, this is actually pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Um, pretty simple design, like I said. He used wood. When I looked at it from the photos, it didn't look like wood. Um, but when I got closer, it did. Uh, we got the geyser shower system that we keep in here. Okay, so here it is. So we got the thermal uh, thermocells. We use those for bugs. Those will automatically come out. We got a thermos here that we don't have really have a place for yet, but we will find a place. We don't. We, like I said, we're still in the process of working this out. But we got the front runner utility kit. We got that out of Mountain West uh, Expo. Um, that I, I found that to be a really good kit um, because I was traveling around with some of these roll up stuff and just wasn't working very well. So we decided to go down that road. Um, spatula's out. I'm not sure why that's out, but just throw that in there for right now. Okay, but yeah, like we, we still got a lot of work to do. As you can see, I got some wiring and stuff I got to tuck away. I got to finish up the top ceiling, get it insulated. Um, but we got USB charging over here. Got a little seasoning rack. We got a little butcher block section so we can use it for cutting. And then I got some trimming out I got to do around here and around here. This here is actually what holds our blackstone, the, the, top of the black stone and then the black stone actually fits up here nice and neat because the geyser system will sit right here we got um the coleman fold and go we actually use that as a case to kind of protect it so it's our seat for our toilet um but we have this here and this folds down and then we keep our coleman stove here so if we want to use the stove we can use that or we take our black stone with us everywhere we go we love that thing um so and then we use these roller cam straps here that we picked out at uh, Expo. These things are awesome. If you guys have not checked these, so we use these roller cams, the, the straps here, to actually hold down our fridge. This stuff works amazing. Like, check it out. So it's got this little roller in here, and as you pull up on it, it tightens it down really good, and it doesn't move. It doesn't, it doesn't come off. It stays on there pretty good. We took a couple, and we actually bolted them down to the rig here. To hold our fridge down and for the most part it actually holds up pretty good so yeah this is our galley um like i said it does not any, not anything fancy but it's functional that's the thing make sure it's functional if it's not functional you'll never use it you'll be getting you'll get so discouraged with it um you really won't want to use it um add on to it make changes make it functional for what you guys need it for not what uh, what you're seeing on youtube and everything else and see how other people are doing stuff yes those are good ideas um trust me you guys can get really good ideas from that kind of stuff but only do it if it's functional for you and right for you because if it isn't you guys will be frustrated you guys will get sick and tired of it and then you guys just won't want to use it um and then it'll just sit around so galley so let's go take a look at the inside. Now, we do have the panel off because we are in the process of hooking up our diesel heater because we hooked up or we mounted these new cabinets. Our diesel heater was back there where that secondary cabinet is, right here. So now the hole is being covered. So now we have this diesel heater here and we got the tur turret plate and we're going to be basically cutting a hole right here between this cabinet and this wall that's going to be going back up and that's where our diesel heater is going to go and we'll have the vents and everything that goes up underneath there and goes out to the side and pushes out so we do have some work that we are working on right now i know a lot of people are saying i live in florida i don't really need the diesel heater you are correct, um, but I do still plan on traveling and still want to go to places that have colder climates and that diesel heater works extremely well. If you guys have not gotten one, you guys definitely want to look into a diesel heater. This one here is not the self-contained one. Um, that one there is the individual because we are actually building it in to mount in here. Now, we have been looking at for the Bronco here, we've been looking at a self-contained one that we can actually use and build a small vent to hook up to the to the window up here right up there and the reason for that is so that we can use and sleep in the bronco if we need to while we're traveling 
and not have to come all the way back here. Um, there's pros and cons to that, but we won't get into that on this video. Um, but we have the mattress in here. We got some of our other miscellaneous stuff. Fan, this is the cover that goes and covers all that back up. Um, now, one of the other things, too, we got centralized lighting over there. If you can see that. Or that little black box right there. That there is our aux beam controller, and that's actually what controls all of our lights and functions for our fridge, for our lighting, for our TV, everything. So we, we can actually power stuff on and off right from there. I'm still doing some research to find out if we have ability to do a secondary panel in the back so that we have two panels that we can control everything off of, which would be really nice ideal. So when you're in the back, you can turn stuff on and off and not have to come all the way up here. Good concept, but we're still working on that. Um, yeah, but sleeping area. We got a max fan that actually works really good when we're um, in cooler, not humid weather. If it's humid, then the max fan doesn't work really well. Um, but it makes it more like air conditioning when you open up these windows here open those up open that one up and then turn this on so it pulls the air out it'll push it up against the rooftop tent and push it out the back um, it actually works really good like an air conditioner um, but that's only if it's not humid if it's humid you're going to still have feel the stickiness you're going to still feel a little more uncomfortable um, but it does help so just so you guys know um, that is an option if you guys are looking for a, a cheap way to do that kind of stuff and of course we put some safety features in here we got the the smoke, carbon monoxide and smoke detector in there just because we are running the diesel heater and we want to make sure if there's carbon monoxide or anything that it warns us and lets us know so we can vent it out and get out of the trailer. So, um, Like I said, we have the TV, we have the stereo. We have a couple small fans up here too that we uh, leave up there. Um, USB charging so we can charge all of our devices and whatnot. But that's pretty much the inside. Um, Roto packs, nothing's really changed. We got those ones there. We had the gas ones back here, um, but once I built the new bracket for the Bronco Sport on the Wilco Hitch, we built this bracket here, put our uh, the the Roto packs back here so that we have some fuel when we travel. But this here, um, I didn't really feel comfortable because we had fire and stuff back here, and that's really dangerous. So that's why we kind of took these off, put the Roto packs here. We also installed this this little quick connector. We have a hose that comes off and we can pretty much tie into our fire pit. We can tie into other gas items so that we can use that with. Starting to sprinkle. Um, there's a lot of the things that other people are asking about. Oh, so the hitch. This hitch was actually bought off of eBay and we can provide a link to what you guys are looking for. If you guys are wanting to chop your front uh, neck off and actually put a 360 degree um, hitch on there where it moves up down left right pretty much wherever you want to go so it's not popping off this hitch has been amazing I've seen Patriot campers uh, use this here on their trailers and it works really good so if you guys are looking for a good hitch we'll leave that down below um, make sure when you guys do this use safety get somebody that knows what they're doing with welding they because this is what's going to be pulling all your weight from this trailer here if you don't have somebody that knows what they're doing and, and welds it up wrong, then you, you can be running into some issues. Uh, we keep the diesel fuel tank right up front here. Um, comes all the way back. It did go all the way back to the back here, um, but we don't have that back here anymore. Like I said, we have, I don't know if you can see it, we had a hole back here. We keep our sink back here. We do have a water pump back here. You can see that back there. Uh, we also have a fill tube for the water tank, which we will be revamping, but we are going to be mounting it up underneath here. We're going to mount the water tank, and we're going to mount um, a couple other things up underneath, right around the axle area to kind of help keep it protected uh, so that we still have water because we do have on the side over here, in the Pelco case, this is our shower. So showers worked really good, um, works really uh, weeder. Runs off the propane, has a shower head. Here's the additional hose that hooks up on the other side. But basically all we do is we disconnect this hose, hook it up to here when we're using it. We got the shower curtain over here that comes out and we can actually use for showering. Um, the wife really likes this, so we'll be re-implementing this with the tank and stuff. But right now we do have the ability that if she wants to, we have the geyser system now. I've used it once. I really like it. Um, I'm waiting to take her out so that she can try it out. 
um, and that I, this is not the hot water heating one. I didn't see a uh, I didn't see a purpose for that. Um, basically, we have the jet boil for it, and we're just gonna boil one liter of water, plug it in, put two liters of cold water in there, and enjoy. Like they say, um, it works really good. So one other thing I want to talk to you guys about is also make sure you when you guys are doing some planning for your trailer build before you go down this road make sure you do some research on an insurance company that's going to be able to insure you now we have state farm right now um, works really good uh, we ran into a problem where like progressive wouldn't do it geico wouldn't do it we ran into all sorts of issues but we reached out to state farm and they actually helped us out with some specialty insurance for this I'm not promoted by them, so this is not me just like trying to help them out. Uh, I'm just saying there's very limited companies. Now, Progressive is out there that can do it. Um, I think you just have to find the right the right people to kind of do the Progressive insurance for you um, because they do recommend they, they have specialty insurance. But for us, we had a hard time trying to find somebody that would insure this. It's not a regular RV. It's not manufactured. It doesn't have any type of... Um, scale that that they can go off of so when you guys are doing that kind of stuff make sure you guys are keeping track of your build keep track of your costs they're going to ask you about what you have into it what how much does it cost you guys to build they're also going to ask you as far as what type of coverage you're looking for do you just want liability for it so that you're covered technically if you have a trailer like this in an rv once you hook it up to your vehicle the v, the trailer becomes insured so if you do hit somebody it is covered for their vehicles but it does not cover the damage to your vehicle so that's why I want to make sure you guys look into more insurances so that you guys can find something to protect your investment as you guys could build out like different things like this, like the trailer. It's considered a specialty RV trailer. So do a lot of research and document as much as you can when you guys are going through these this process of building your, your RV out. Because if you guys don't, then it, it'll be very hard for an insurance agency to give you a really accurate quote and take photos as you go as you're going along if you guys aren't documenting it that that could be a big thing but take photos as you guys are building it because they'll have some questions about how they how the structure is built how the, basically um the exterior is put together and how it's all all constructed because they do youtube that made it very simple for me to go back pull some of that stuff pull some photos send it over to them they were able to get us insured instantly um, after they underwrited it and got some information back and now it's covered so if something happened to it um, we would be covered so that we can rebuild or go buy another one but I'm I kind of like the building because then we can build it to our needs and, f and what we want um, instead of what other trailers and what other tr other things might not have or whatnot so I, I, I get that Patriot campers and some of the other companies out there have really nice trailers um, but at fifty thousand dollars that's not for us uh, we have almost about probably seven or eight thousand into this one here, which is a fraction of the cost for that. Um, so for us to keep it cheap and to be able to go out, that's more realistic for what I, th I see a lot of p other people doing. Kind of why I, I'm part of the Budget Overland group, where I go in and and try to chime in and try to help out Benji and Jay with their page and and give out information on what we've done and what we've learned in the overlanding to help you guys out but take your time and plan for it because if you don't take your time and plan for it you're going to run into all sorts of obstacles like we did um, where we kind of just jumped it and just started building and then later on we were like oh it'd be better if we did it this way or how about we do it this way and when we when we ran into those problems we had to go back and correct a lot of things that we did so as you can see like the like the galley for me because i'm a cook i like cooking on, on my spare time and after outside of work and doing some different things trying different things making different things um that's that's especially essential for me so make sure you guys are planning for what you guys are going to find fit for what you guys are going to use it for so like i said we got the rooftop we got the rhino rack 270 awning and yeah i i really don't know what else i can talk about I, if anybody has more questions we can talk more about it the tires are 31 inch um, toyo tires uh, we do have that on a 3,500 pound axle. Now that axle does not have any type of lift or anything on it. We bolted it right back up to the trailer, centered it back up. Um, we did put wheel spacers on that to kind of bring the wheels out because when we measured the, the axle, it was a little bit shorter than what we what we thought it should be. Um, we learned a lesson there. So make sure you guys measure multiple times. And then the theory is cut once. Um, now this was a pre-made uh, axle that we went and picked up. They welded our new 
mounting points to it so that it matched the other ones exactly. So all we had to do was bolt it right back up. That company was amazing to work with. Um, yeah. So hope you guys are liking the content. If you guys like this video. Make sure you guys subscribe down below. Um, that's how it helps us uh, continue to do this kind of stuff. The more subscribers we get, the more kind of the kind of content we can bring out to you guys and, and reach out to you guys more. Um, doing this kind of stuff so see you guys on the next video peace